Oh, you're nice to wake up to. Oh, you want to play fetch already? Okay, here you go. Ready? One, two, go. Okay, I got to pack up my tent. Okay, give me a sec, bud. It's very cold. Every morning so far in the Baja Divide has been chilly. Much chillier than I remember last time. But the sound of these birds is making me happy. That's pretty cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the bumpy road. We have about 45 miles to the town of Mulehe. They have hotels, they have Wi-Fi, and I think I might take advantage of some of that because I'm feeling pretty dirty. <laughs> I need to dry off all my wet stuff. This morning, we both put on very wet, cold shoes. But you know who's always in good spirits? Mira! She doesn't care about wet shoes, or Wi-Fi, or hotels, or any of that stuff. So I'm gonna to try to embrace Mira's spirit today. Ooh, look at that. Good morning, caballos. So last night at about three in the morning, I started hearing things. Something big and loud, snapping branches and stuff. And then I made a sound, whew, and I could hear all these horses running around. And it looks like we just found the whole family. Hi guys. You woke me up last night. I just want to say hi. You're beautiful. Let's go, Mira. Pull us. Pull us all the way to Mulehe. So we just saw a sign in the middle of nowhere for this rancho that has food and cafe and coffee. We're gonna go, check it out. This guy's yelling at us from over the across the way. Buenos dias! Buenos dias, amigos! Oy, oy, una cuesta grande para llegar aquí. Woo! Bueno, mucho gusto. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Rosalina. Rosalina, mucho gusto. Oh, qué bonito. Look at this. Mira, you have friends, bud. These are your amigos. ¿Y por cuánto tiempo han vivido aquí ustedes? Aquí tenemos 20 años. 20 años. ¿Y qué es lo que hacen aquí? Pues que hacemos queso. ¿Vienen bastantes ciclistas aquí? Algo así. ¿Sí? El año pasado sí vinieron varios. ¿Y ustedes hacen el queso, no? Hey. ¿Es queso yo. de la cabra? Uh -huh. Puro fresco entonces. Sí. Rico, ¿no? Uh -huh. Uy, qué rico. Cortinas de harina. Sí. Pura mano. Pura mano, sí. Mira. Yeah, ¿Es okay? Parecía la vaca. Okay, you, this is this is you'll see what happens in the future. This is uh, leche de cabra. Oh, nice. Yeah. Goat milk. Yeah. You know, this is the nice things about the Baja, like meeting these people. You know, you stop in here, you, do, you forget that these places exist, and uh, money goes directly into the local pockets. Like it's, it, and, and we get to s see how they live. Yeah. You know, it's really nice. Gracias, amigo. Gracias, que le va bien. Sí, sí, gracias, gracias. Muy amable. That was a really great experience. They said they make about three or four blocks of cheese a day and they sell, sell it in the town of Mulehe. And just recently, they started seeing cyclists ride by. So they put up a sign about a kilometer away. I'm guessing some, some tourist, some bike tourist, you know, made the sign for them because it's all in English. And this is a great little side business for them. It's really fun to have experiences like this. This is why you travel, at least this is why I travel. It reminds me a lot of living in Honduras, just a very simple way of life. And uh, they've been together for 44 years, this couple. 44 years they've been a couple. Adios! That was awesome. That was really awesome. Walking through water again. Those are the only types of experiences you can have pretty much on a bike. 
Maybe you'd be on a motorcycle through here, but this is definitely not the tourist trail by any means. And it just goes to show when you take the road less pedaled, less traveled by, and you are treated to some full on treasures. And that really was one. That was a, a short experience, but a very impactful experience. We need a boat for this section. So I just checked the thermometer on my Wahoo here, 60 degrees. And uh, that explains why it was so cold last night. Right now it's perfect riding weather. But uh, the guy back at the ranch said there is a cold front, un frente frío, coming through. But no rain, that's good. Splash! Ooh, this is so clear. So I've been witnessing what it's been like to, to dog pack for the last two days, you know, and it's like, it's really fascinating. And I love to see the relationship with you and Mira. I mean, it's really like your family. It's not like you just have this dog with you. Like she's your, First child. she's your child. Yeah. yeah. yeah what what has Mira taught you about life, travel, uh, patience maybe? <clears throat> yeah, definitely patience, but also being prepared for things. So like I need to sort of think ahead and how much food she needs how much water she needs. But you know, the, the greatest thing of it has been the conversations and the relationships that it starts. I'll come out of a grocery store somewhere and there's people crowded around and saying hello and she's friendly and good natured. And in fact, her name came from people in Spain pointing and exclaiming, mira, mira, mira. As I would be riding by, they would want their friends to see this, this <laughs> strange contraption. So that's been the thing, I eh? like just, the people you meet and, and those relationships and seeing her with that too. So it, it um, as a person traveling alone, it uh, it's like this this greeting to to uh, yeah. meet other people. It's fun, like for a dog, you know, there's sticks and dirt and water and you know running all day long and and then some camping at night. So it seems like um, you know as long as you can keep them safe and healthy, then um, yeah, you might as well go. You do have to adjust um, your expectations when you're going. So the distance you can go in a day, you know, you have to be attentive to your dog's needs. I mean, today we've done a lot of up and down. So on the steep ups and maybe some of the very steep downs, Mira's out of the, of the basket. So she's running or walking at those points. And so that takes a lot of energy of her, out of her. Whereas if it was more steady, then she could be in the box and I could, um, I could transport her down the road. All right, so how do you do hills? Because I imagine carrying a dog up a hill is no bueno. Yeah, I mean, you think about adding 40 pounds of dog and uh, food and other little things for the dog, you know, it's, it's heavy. So fortunately I don't have to carry her up. So as we get, as we approach the base of the hill, I'll ask her to jump out and then uh, she'll run beside me or wherever she goes. And I just ride the hill at my own pace. And then as we get to the top here, the crest like we're at now, I'll stop and uh, and give her the command up, 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 and uh, she'll hop in the back, and off we go down the descent or across the flat or this kind of thing. So that's so cool. It's like it's we're getting better and better at it, you know. But it's uh, yeah, it's a constant thing throughout the day. So going up is one thing. What's going down like with the dog in there? Yeah, surprisingly, like on the steep descents, it's actually really hard. You know, 40 extra pounds in the bike. Sometimes your weight is shifting, you got loose terrain. So there's times when I just have to have her out. Uh, the brakes just can't handle it. I got the biggest disc rotors I can put on this thing and four piston brake calipers, but uh, they heat up something fierce. Are you tired, bud? We got 20 more miles, so wake up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going. Oh, we need a stick. Yep. 
That's a good girl. Get your stick. Okay. <laughs> bouncy, bouncy. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, that's a good girl. Come on. Yeah, buddy. Lead the way. Oh, come on, give me a hug. Give me dirty. Keep going. Keep going. Somebody's all tuckered out. We gotta go, baby. You're sleeping on that seat, the bike seat. Yeah. <laughs> we are out of the canyons. As you can see, we're far away and we're on this road right here, which looks really easy because it is flat, but it is so bumpy and washboardy. My brain is going to be shaking tonight in bed. <laughs> oh. Sometimes it's nice to splurge on a hotel. This is only 500 pesos, which is like 30 bucks. It's not that bad. Oh, what a day. This was a hard 45 mile day. It took most of the day and it was some pretty hard pedaling, but the highlight of the day was definitely meeting that old couple in the middle of nowhere who made us breakfast. They were just so sweet and cute and we were riding by and the guy was just like, hey, hey, come over here for coffee. And at the time we both had eaten and we didn't need coffee, but you know what? Those are the experiences. That's why you come here is to meet people like this. And, uh, we had a great 30 minutes together, maybe a little bit more. And uh, I'll probably never see those people again in my life. But their memory, their spirit's always going to be with us. And I'll, when I think back to this section of Baja, those are the people I'm going to think about. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we met them. It's, it's wonderful how the world works sometimes. So now I'm going to do some stretching and enjoy real bed. And uh, we're going to get after it again tomorrow.